I'm Kimberly from Fat Corner Shop, and on today's video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips for more accurate blocks. So if you've watched any of my videos, you probably know. I like everything to be very precise, accurate, and I do try to get my points to match. Now this video is gonna have lots of tips, and what you can do is just pick the ones that you think work best for you. So let's get started on tip number one. The supplies I use for really accurate blocks are 100% cotton thread because most of the time your quilts are made with 100% cotton fabric. So I would start there. I like to use Artful Color 2000. I would also recommend the Clover White Seam Ripper and you might change it every two years or so, but I like this one because this right here is skinny enough to get in your seams. I would work with a rotary cutter that fits your hand well. This is the one I like, but everyone has a different um, feel for their hand. I definitely would use 45 millimeter blades and I would make sure you change them at least once every project. For pins, I like pins that are nice and thin. I use the Little House pins from Japan, but my tip is to use the thinner the pin, the better. I would also recommend whatever brand ruler you use, use the same ruler throughout the entire project because it has the same measurements. I use the Creative Grids brand. Tip number two, it might be the most controversial thing of this entire video, but I love to starch. When you're looking at these blocks, this is unstarched and this is starched. And you can see this one is much more accurate. I do want to show you that if you hold both blocks, you can tell this one is much firmer. So I love to starch. It's something I've been doing for years and years, and I'm going to show you my starch method. My tip number two is probably the most controversial. I like to starch all of my fabric. I use Faultless Niagara starch, and the way that I starch is I completely saturate my fabric. And when you completely saturate it, it should be wet on the front and the back. And I will show you the drying rack I use so that I can dry all of my fabric. Now what it does, when it is starched, it pre-shrinks your fabric. It makes it ravel less on the outside and it's gonna give you easier seams when you pin. If you're going to starch, I would starch the front, the back and the binding so that it is all pre-shrunk at one time. My tip number three is something I do for a majority of my quilts. If I'm gonna make, for example, 20 blocks in a quilt, I will cut just one block, piece it, make sure I like the cutting, the pressing, everything. Make sure I like it before I go and cut all 20 blocks. So always make a test block before you move on because you might find a tip that you wanna do for the remaining blocks. My next tip is anytime I can make a unit bigger and trim it down, I do. I do this always on an hourglass block. And we have an hourglass unit cheat sheet for quilt patterns at the Fat Quarter Shop website. That way, if you are using a pattern that doesn't have you trim it down, it tells you exactly what to cut. You put your Creative Grids ruler on there, you trim it down, and this is how it's going to look. And you can see, all of the inaccuracies are taken out when you trim down and that's gonna give you beautiful, precise blocks. Tip number five is something I've been doing for over 20 years. So anytime I can use foundation paper for accuracy, I'm going to do that. So my very first love was triangles on a roll. It gives me 100% accurate half square triangles. Recently, I developed square in a square and flying geese paper. And what that does, it gives you 100% accurate blocks. And on all three of these, we have cheat sheets at the Fat Quarter Shop website to tell you exactly what you need for your pattern. I know if you try these products, you will love them. They're all branded It's So Emma or Triangles on a Roll. Tip number six is a game changer. And if you use it, I think you will love it. I used to constantly put my blocks together and have to seam rip them apart. And I would sew the wrong pieces to the wrong pieces. So using a design board has batting on one side. You lay out your blocks once. You take this to and from your sewing machine and your ironing board. It keeps all your pieces in place. And then you can add more design boards and keep each block on each board and you'll be super organized. Tip number seven, I can't emphasize more, pin, pin, pin. Now we talked about using nice thin pins at the beginning, but as you are piecing a block, you want to pin, and that is gonna keep all of your fabrics nice and in place 
and keep everything together. So definitely pin your blocks as you piece. Tip number eight is so important. You want to make sure that whatever machine you're using, you have an accurate quarter inch foot. I prefer to use a quarter inch foot that has a lip on it so that holds the fabric nice and steady. But whatever brand of machine, just make sure you have an accurate quarter inch foot. If you can't find a foot that is accurate, you can always use the Sew Standard Seam Guide and use washi tape or another marking solution on your machine. But whichever you use, make sure you're using an accurate quarter inch seam. So tip number nine is making sure that you press really nice and flat. I prefer to work with patterns that have arrows that tell me exactly where to press. But that is also why I do step number three, where I make one test block. I make sure I like the way everything is pressed. I want everything nice and flat. You can either press open or press to one side, but Whatever you do on the front, you shouldn't have any bumps. It should just be nice and flat. Our final tip is to measure your block at the end. This block should be 12 and a half by 12 and a half, and it is almost exactly 12 and a half. Now here, what you don't wanna do is you don't want to just trim it down because your block is never gonna come out exactly the right size. You just want it to be in the area or approximate. But what I like to do is I'm gonna take a ruler and take all the quarter inch marks, put that on my ruler and just trim all of the excess off. You just wanna make sure you don't chop any of your points off. And when you get all of this excess thread off, it's gonna look nicer in your final quilt. So now I've shown you the 10 tips that work for me. I'd love in the comments for you to tell me what do you do that makes your blocks precise. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and join me every Friday for my weekly live streams and I'll see you on the next video.